loving about her. Your green shop is good. It is shy to say. It's returning for another amazingly, amazingly video. Um, I am back. Hello. Um, I'm back and I'm better than ever. I'm ending karmic cycles. I'm stepping into my power. So life is good. Okay. Um, this video. Oh, before I even get to that, thank you for everybody. Subscribe, comment, email, support, all of that. You guys are amazing. You guys are awesome, for real. Like, I was never validated as a child for my own individuality, and y'all are uh, the litmus test that I can really be myself. And people who gon' mess with me, gon' mess with me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna find my tribe based on my authenticity. This video is about uh, how to track, uh, why, I'm sorry, why you attract narcissists, okay? Why do you attract narcissists? I know narcissism is kind of a, a huge topic um, now, and but the thing is, a lot of people mistake narcissism for people just being a plain asshole, okay? So people be like, you know, my ex was a narcissist, aka probably didn't even have any narcissist character characteristics. He was probably just an asshole who, he was probably just an asshole, okay? So, so I'm gonna break down what a narcissist is, why you attract them and what you can do about uh reforming your energy so you can keep those uh energy suckers away okay so first we're going to decode narcissists okay we're going to break down what a narcissist actually is and how they became narcissists okay so according to wikipedia you know i couldn't uh, i couldn't find the words to convey what a narcissist is so i just decided to um uh, look up the dictionary definition of it okay so narcissism or narcissist is a self-centered personality style characterized as having an excessive interest in one's physical appearance or image and, and, and an excessive preoccupation with one's own needs, often at the expense of others. Okay, that's very important, right? So, reason number one why you, well, the main reason why you attract narcissists is because you are usually probably a very empathetic person okay but with coming with an input for being an empathetic person um you either have no boundaries with your empathy or you have no really clear boundaries okay and that again you either have no but you attract narcissists because you either have no boundaries with your empathy or you have no clear boundaries with your empathy okay um narcissists are people who operate uh with apathy with no boundaries okay apathy is the opposite of empathy apathy is the ability to not even want to uh, simultaneously relate or put yourself in the compassionate shoes of, of another human being okay so usually the narc has no boundaries at the expense of others you on the other hand you have empathy with no boundaries at the expense of yourself okay and believe it or not your internal dialogue, people can sense how you feel about yourself and especially narcissists. Narcissists can tell that uh, your empathy is so easily given out and they use your empathy to feed themselves. You have to view your empathy like currency, okay? And I know a lot of empaths always say, well, I can't go into large crowds because, you know, I absorb everybody's energy. I understand that I was there. But that's not an excuse, okay? You have to, when you're in large crowds, for example, uh, you have to learn how to practice uh, apathy with a balance, okay? Hold on, stay with me now. A narcissist is usually formed by not having their needs met in childhood, okay? Uh, when you are a child, when you are a baby, uh, when the baby is crying, it's letting you know it needs something, um, and then the parent should help regulate that child or that baby's um, emotions, okay? Uh, usually babies come in the world fresh, new to the 3D world, um, of course, if they're not reincarnated, but for the most part, um, they come into the world and the parent is supposed to be the guiding force in, in the third dimensional world, right? So usually narcissists, their parents were neglectful to their needs. Now, there's a spectrum of this. So because they go through their childhood and they realize nobody's going to meet my need. My parents are incapable of meeting my needs no matter how much I beg, pleaded, act out, etc. So 
they have programmed themselves and they have adapted like, okay, nobody's gonna meet my needs, so I have to meet my own needs. And usually, and there's something wrong with that, but narcissists take it to the it's a spectrum. Narcissists stick to a spectrum of self-centeredness and in a severe case, borderline uh, psychosis, being psychotic, okay? But we're gonna start at the, 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 the spectrum of uh, unhealthy self-centeredness, okay? So when a narcissist, when a, nar a narcissist is formed, um, by, the, by them basically realize, okay, my parents and my environment is not providing my need, I'm gonna have to do it myself. And they usually don't look at themselves as victims, okay? Um, usually a, a healed, healthy person would be like, okay, I know I didn't get my needs met in childhood. However, um, I still can, un I, I know that was wrong. I know I was a victim, so I'm going to change myself and be a better person to see a better world. A narcissist doesn't view it that way. A narcissist doesn't like to associate themselves as being a victim of neglect or uh, any type of traumatizing abuse because it's, it's seen as a form of weakness to them. And when you, when you grow up like that, um, you really see yourself, you really see vulnerability as a weakness. So instead of just being like, okay, what was done to me was wrong, they'd be like, in their mind, what was done to me is just how the world is. The world is cold, the world is hard. So I'm going to internalize those things, feel my needs, and they do the same thing to others because they think that their treatment in their childhood, being neglected and being ignored and not having their, their emotions self soothed is normal. And in reality, it's not normal. Usually these people, um, my definition of a narcissist is somebody who wants control at the expense of others in, in their relationships by any means necessary. This is where the gaslighting comes in. This is for uh, the fight for control gas, you know, comes in the narcissist may play mind games or my uh, uh, formal narcissism, for example, uh, I had to realize I am a victim of narcissism narcissistic abuse you know when I was growing up my mom uh I don't I wouldn't say she's a full-blown narcissist but she definitely has majority of the traits okay um she and my grandmother like I said it's generational so my experience with narcissists I didn't even realize I was a victim of narcissistic abuse until I actually start to study it and start to see patterns and correlations um so for example uh, my grandmother is a covert narcissist, right? These are narcissists who, uh, they're really good at hiding uh, their need for control by being a compassionate person, you know what I'm saying? They're not like the, they're not like the narcissist where the narcissist is just, you know, narcissist, you can tell it, he's just a, a dickhead. They'll do anything for control, they'll tell you anything, uh, they'll beat you into submission just so you can, and then they'll make you feel bad for beating them because you wasn't, doing their expectations you know what i'm saying like some shit like that just to give an example so for example uh an example of gaslighting uh that a narcissist might do uh for example my grandmother has a younger daughter which is my mother's younger sister um she has uh self-image issues okay she's doesn't like her weight. She's a little more on the heavier side, but she's still beautiful. But she allowed my grandmother to pick at her weight because the narcissist do that. The narcissist uh, criticize you so you can look to them for validation, okay? Like they'll constantly pick at you, especially if it's a parent. They constantly pick at you so you can uh, seek their validation. So if you're not doing something right, you'll feel like you're doing something wrong and then you'll constantly, that's like the trick that they get to keep a hold of you in some type of way. They want to, um, you know, have you to validate themselves. They want you to validate you through them, through them. Okay. They want, they want you to give up your power so you can validate them. Okay growing up narcissists are never shown unconditional love okay uh, I believe unconditional love is only between parent and child only okay um, narcissists usually grew up in an environment where they have to perform and meet their parents needs to be shown love or they they need to perform for love basically um, because for example their parents might have been and narcissists do this too um, 
you don't get praise from a narcissist unless you do something that makes them look good, okay? Um, for their self-image, right? I said that in the, earlier in the description before, right? So, um, and eventually they end up doing this shit to lovers, okay? Like, I've never really been in a narcissistic... Well, I have. I dated... I wouldn't say I dated him, but we had a thing. And looking back on it, I see how his wounds kind of affected it was it was a mess honey okay but he would do things like he'll say things to me like oh that's a turn off and then it was to the point one time just like I don't give a fuck what turns you on or off like I'm just gonna be me and he didn't have shit to say because he knew that he no longer had control so and but I knew how he explained his childhood his mother he was a mixed child so his mom was white his dad was black so his mom would like was kind of the narcissist in his life so he adapted to that and adapted to that behavior and started to do that and started to do that in his um in his romantic relationships right and i peep that um so at when they were growing when the narcissist before they became narcissists when they were growing up they would never experienced unconditional love they had to perform for their parents usually for, the, for their parents self-image to get validation okay and usually on the negative scale, it's two ways that this can go. Either that person becomes a people pleaser or that person adapts that behavior to their partners and their children and the cycle repeats through the next generation, okay? So this is also where people pleasing come from. Um, a lot of uh, super empaths, we were probably raised by people who had narcissistic tendencies. Um, so the people pleasing came through, if y'all you, noticed your childhood, your parents didn't praise you unless you did something that benefited um, their image okay because usually people have children um as an extension of themselves for control okay that's another reason why i realized some people i think that's one of the reasons i was born um because a lot of people be having kids because they have no control over their personal lives they have no control over their careers they have no control over nothing else in their life so sometimes they decide to have kids because I birth you, I made you, so I control you because you're a, a, a carbon copy of me. And obviously that's some bullshit, okay? So sometimes when you grow up in that environment where you have to perform to make your parents happy, that leads to people pleasing. That was me in my early 20s, honey. It was a hot mess, child. But I made it through and I know my worth. Fuck them people. So now with the empaths, empaths, we usually understand to a degree that trauma, that, that the trauma that, we, like I said, the trauma that we experienced uh, wasn't right and usually we end up being uh too forgiving okay so i'm gonna make a scale here this is called my empathy scale okay so this is the empath with no boundaries okay this having on this side you're having too much empathy on this side is the narcissist the narcissist has apathy okay so so Usually, so you're attracting narcissists because you're too on, um, you have too much empathy in the, at the expense of yourself. And the narcissist has too much apathy at the expense of others in their relationships. So the key balance is to have a balance in the middle. The narcissist needs to learn how to have empathy for other people's feelings and emotions and other people's state of being, which they don't because they, like I said, when you're in childhood, nobody met your needs, you're gonna get your needs met by any means necessary, even if that means crushing other people spiritually and emotionally, right? Now, here are you, the, the empath, the person that always fall for a sad story, the person that has no fucking boundaries when it comes to empathy, the person that doesn't have any clear boundaries when it comes to their empathy. Your empathy is currency, okay? Not everybody is deserving of empathy. Um, you can actually, quote unquote, get bad karma, because I don't really believe in karma, but I'm using it in the way that y'all are saying. You can get bad karma for giving empathy to horrible fucking people, okay? Your empathy is currency. You would ask a car. You would ask your money, okay? Because money is energy, okay? I mean, well, money is energy, but your empathy is energy, okay? So what you need to do is have a nice little medium right here. So as an empath, you need to start practicing a little bit more apathy, but not to the point where, like I said, you just disregard others and have no fucking soul and just crushing other people's just 
getting what you need at the expense of others. No, you need to have a balance of apathy. Be like, okay, I under like you need to have compassion. That's what I want to say. You need to have compassion. The difference between compassion and empathy is empathy is I understand what you're going through because I've been I've been there before. So now I'm gonna enmesh myself and I feel your feelings and all that other bullshit, right? But as an empath who has no clear boundaries with their empathy, you need to practice compassion. There's this between compassion and empathy. Compassion is I understand that you've been hurt in the past. I recognize your sad story. However, you know, I'm not going to sacrifice myself at the expense of you because you are responsible for your journey. I can help you, but with boundaries with myself, okay? I can I can be compassionate towards because I see you, you're a human being, you've suffered, but you also need to do the work to get to where you need to be, okay? So this is why you attract narcissists because y'all not doing that. And then narcissists, use because we live in a world where spirits are inhabiting human beings. And so the, the spirits inhabiting these human beings called narcissists can pick up that you have no boundaries with your empathy. You don't have compassion, right? You, you even though you know this person, uh, and then they the narcissists use that. Okay, the narcissist feed off your empathy that this has happened to me my entire childhood by my mother's side of the family and I did not realize it until probably like last year, okay? And I had to draw clear cut boundaries and I'm no longer in contact with those people and my life has been so much better. I should have did this shit years ago, okay? But, you know, and one thing a narcissist hates to do is fucking lose control, okay? That's, and they will do anything anything because they prey on your empathy they pray like the guy that i was date uh kind of dating in 2020 the leo who was uh, he's narcissist narcissist um he would pray on the fact that i understand that you went through a hard childhood your mom did this and your mom didn't really teach you about blackness nor did your dad so now you have an identity crisis so subconsciously he was feeding off my empathy for that but i had to get to a point where i'm just like yo like you're not taking any accountability for your childhood. Like I said, I can I can empathize with you, but only to a certain degree because you're not doing the work. And usually sometimes subconsciously narcissists try to keep you around as a void for them not doing their own childhood work. Okay, their childhood recognition, right? And it's a lot, it's really hard for them to be vulnerable with themselves. So they use you, the empath, to get what they've been missing in childhood, but they abuse it. You feel what I'm saying? It's it's a very interesting dynamic. And I think that the, we're talking a lot about narcissism coming up because it's a lot more empaths being born in this world. A lot of people are waking up to, hey, I have abilities and gifts and stuff like that, but it needs to be in a balance. You need to have an equilibrium. So if you are an empath, when you're out, you need to start practicing empathy, okay? Because you're, I mean, apathy. I'm sorry, you need to start practicing apathy. Because your empathy is causing, is is your is your detriment. When you have too much in, empathy, it can cause you your detriment, okay? What can you do as an empath? Because everybody's capable of being an empath. But I understand some people are more open energetically to that uh, title and energy than others, okay? Um, so what can you do? My advice. Okay, step number one. Like I explained before, have boundaries with your energy. Okay, and what I mean by that is I have a quote that I've been saying for years. You observe your your reality, your environment. You don't absorb it. So when you're in crowded spaces, and I know it can get over because I'm like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I I used to dance. Well, I'm kind of retired right now. But when I was in a strip club, when I was dancing, like I would have to practice empathy, apathy, because I was absorbing so many people's emotions. So you have to practice apathy for yourself. Like you have to, you have to view the world sometimes as a me versus them. And if you don't practice apathy to some degree, it's going to cost you. It's not gonna cost them because it's gonna always be somebody in need. It's gonna always be somebody. Most of the world is traumatized. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's why I don't take nothing personal from this world because if you were to ask that person 
what made you like this or if you was asked that person to explain their life story or how they treat you like shit and why they do the shit that they do nine times ten times out of ten it's some traumatic ass story oh my mama left me oh my daddy left me oh my daddy used to be my mama used to be my mama ain't give a fuck about me my mom's on drugs my daddy was on drugs he you know it's some type of traumatic story right so everybody's traumatized you feel what i'm saying that's why people are going to find this toxic shit down because everybody's traumatized and trying to make it normal instead of just normalizing fucking healing to be a well-balanced emotionally intelligent person when you have boundaries with your energy start practicing apathy you can't absorb everybody's energy and sometimes you learn from the narcissist you have to learn how to be that self-centered so other people's shit won't become on you like i said it's the balance you practice compassion versus hyper empathy is what i want to call it you practice compassion versus hyper empathy because like i said hyper empathy aka empathy with no boundaries or no clear boundaries like i said i've been there so i'm not judging okay rule number two advice number two okay prioritize yourself okay um you have to put yourself in the position of nobody comes before you. And I know for some of us, especially women, uh, we have been trained to put everybody uh, before us. Man, your kids, job, whatever, but no. You put yourself first, okay? And I know that's a hard struggle, but that's what the work when people say do the shadow work or do the work that's what they mean nobody comes before you energetically or physically okay um you have to self how i did it was i self conceptualized myself okay who am i and i i kind of relate myself i like material things okay i got a venus and taurus i like material things so i had to view myself as a rolls royce okay you would have to be like, does this person, if you were, ha if you was to have a Rolls Royce and some, and everybody who came to you and wanted your empathy, or you're trying to give your empathy to other people, even if it's a large space, even if you don't talk to these people directly, you have to view yourself as a Rolls Royce, honey. Would I let all these people drive my Rolls Royce? Hell no, because I work for this and this car is very expensive and it's hard to come by. No, I would not let everybody ride on my Rolls Royce. You have to view your empathy and you have to view yourself like a very expensive item that you view of high value, okay? And usually things of high value are not given so access easily accessible to others, right? So you have to do that with yourself. And I know that's gonna be hard, okay? If you have a problem with this practice, this is where, this is where your shadow work comes in okay but you have to self conceptualize yourself into a valuable item that you view and you have to ask yourself does this person deserves you yourself as 40 million dollars you literally view yourself as a person that's 40 million dollars does this person deserve 40 million dollars nine times out of ten is no so they should not be giving your empathy honey but you can give them compassion i understand that you hurt and i understand i feel your pain I see your pain but you got to do your work by yourself i did the work by myself I went on this journey of self-discovery. Why can't you do it? That's how I view it. And I really view it like natural selection, survival of the fittest. I don't look down on people, but it's just like, okay, if I can do it, you can do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I sat around uh, uh, all uh, sleepless nights crying, doing shadow work, purging emotions. Why can't you do it? So you really got to be like that. And then even in terms of prioritizing yourself, if you're uncomfortable with prioritizing yourself or putting yourself first, um, you need to start asking yourself questions like, um, why do I have a hard time putting myself first? Why do I feel guilty about putting myself first? Where did I learn that putting myself first was wrong? Usually it's something through childhood, so you need to work on that. And who taught me this, okay? So you need to break it down just like that. Even if you gotta use the questions that I just spoke, use that because that's going to give you the key of where your wounding is okay so i know it's hard i know it's a struggle uh, but like i said me i've been interested in the narcissistic dynamic and i had to realize this was a major part of my journey the first half of my life because i realized my 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 maternal side of the family they are it's a generational thing i've seen you know i'm not even mad at my grandmother for doing the things that she did to my mom to cause her to be how she be to me 
But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? These people grown and I'm young. And if I'm doing the work, like I said, even if it's to family members, if I'm doing the work, why are you can't do the work? If I'm aware, why, and you got more life experience than me, you're older than me. So you have to really view it like that. So in conclusion, um, have boundaries with your empathy. Your empathy should be your currency. Your empathy should be like $40 million. You can't give your empathy out to everybody, baby. And that's why you're attracting narcissists. You're attracting narcissists because you have no clear boundaries with your empathy or you have no boundaries with your empathy at all. And people can sense that. Entities, most people are not even in their body. It's like on some insidious type. Y'all seen insidious when they go to the other world and they got to be careful because other spirits want to jump into the to their body to do their their evil will onto the 3D world. It's just like that. A lot of people are possessed by spirits. Okay. A lot of people are fucking possessed by spirits. And they sense that, okay, this is a sucker. Okay, this person doesn't realize they're worth their value. Okay, this person is going to I can I can feed off this person. That's what narcissism is. Narcissism is basically uh, it's like a a, a parasite a parasitic uh spiritual illness because they feed on people who are empathetic. And the more that you don't have boundaries with the narcissist, the more they realize they don't have any control. So either they're going to go find another source or either they're going to be stalking you for the rest of your days because you was their number one supply, honey. So that is why I have clear boundaries with your empathy. It's currency, baby. It's nothing that should be given out fucking freely, especially to these low vibrational ass, stupid ass, dumb ass, don't want to learn shit ass, football watching ass, humans, okay? So, with that being said, I'm glad y'all watched this video. I hope this really helped. I did the best I could to explain it. And um, I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all for watching. Um, I think my next video, I'm going to make a video on how uh, surviving as the black sheep of the family, okay? Uh, because this does ties into narcissism. Uh, and I really want to clear up and help people identify narcissism and things of that nature so thank you for watching um till next time bye